Hi there, my name's Lauren and welcome back to my channel. With everything that's going on worldwide, I thought it might be nice to have a slightly longer project since we all seem to have the time currently. A couple of weeks ago I came across this Ralph Lauren patchwork jacket and I knew I wanted to have a go at recreating it and thought it would be a good quarantine project as it's one to use lots of scrap fabric offcuts. This jacket retails for just under $700 which is just over £575 and is currently out of stock. Over the last week I've been recreating this jacket and here's how I did it. So let's get to it. I used a collection of scrap fabrics that I had from previous projects. For the lining I used some white fleece as this is what I had to hand. However I think the original is lined with cotton and finally I used the zipper that split into two pieces which I managed to get before lockdown. I cut all my scrap fabric into 15 by 15 centimetre squares. I don't usually quilt but from what I know you start by making lots of long rows with your squares and then sew those rows together to get your rectangled piece of fabric. To create the rows I placed my two squares on top of each other right sides together and then sewed down one side. I folded this out and placed the next square on top of the last square that I sewed on, sewed another straight line and then opened it up again and I carried on with this process and this will give you the row. I created my rows eight squares wide and I did end up needing to create more fabric but I was able to go back and do that. Before sewing these rows together I ironed out all the seams to make sure that they laid flat. This helped with the overall quilting to be able to lie flat too without getting twists in the seam allowance when I was sewing them together. Once I'd ironed all my rows, I worked out an order that I wanted them to be in so I didn't get any clashes or prints next to one another. I then repeated the sewing process but along the long side of the rows and sewed them all together to make a big rectangle. I then repeated the ironing process to make sure all these new seams lied flat too. This was the longest part of the process, but I think it's definitely going to be worth it. You can choose to top stitch the squares, I decided not to. Onto the jacket making process, I decided to use an oversized shirt to create the basic template for my jacket as this was a good fit for an outer layer and also had a collar. I created templates of one of the front pieces, the sleeve on the fold, the back section and also the collar section too. I laid each section of the shirt out and used a pin to mark the edge of the sections and then I was able to join these dots up with a pen afterwards. With the pen template I didn't include any seam allowance, I was able to add this on when cutting the pieces out from the fabric. The squares on the original jacket are placed to create diamond shapes and this is something I really like about the jacket. So to do this I placed my pattern pieces making sure that the squares created that diamond effect before I cut them out. This did mean that I had to make more quilted fabric as I was didn't have the best fabric use efficiency. Once I'd cut out all my pieces from the quilted fabric, I also did the same with my lining fleece fabric as well. I placed the two collar pieces right sides together and then sewed along the two short sides and the long side. I turned it inside out and top stitched along the edges I had sewn to give it a clean finish. I put this to the side and then created two separate jackets a lining one and a quilted one. I placed the two front pieces onto the back piece right sides together, then sewed along the shoulder seams and the side seams, sewed the sleeves up along the long edge, and then sewed them into the sleeves hole, holes to attach them in place. The only difference I had with my outer layer was the last minute decision to add pockets. So I cut out some rough pocket shapes around my hands, one side out of the quilted fabric and one side 
out of the fleece fabric. I placed the pockets right sides together on each of the outer front panels and then sewed them in a straight line. I did the same to the back piece. To sew these three pieces together, I placed the front piece on top of the back piece right sides together and had the pockets flapped flaps facing out. I then sewed down the sides and around the pocket edge and then I sewed partly back up the inside of the pocket to help give them a little bit of depth. I then repeated the attaching the sleeve process as well. I then put my two jackets inside one another right sides together so I was ready to pin the collar sandwiched between the neck section of the jacket. I made sure to start in the middle of the collar and pin from there and work my way out to make sure that my collar was centred and leave me with the correct seam allowance at each end. Once I'd pinned this all in place I then sewed the whole thing to secure it. The next step I had was attaching the zipper. I haven't worked with one of these zippers before, however it was pretty basic to use. I started by splitting the zipper into two pieces and then pinned one side at a time onto the outer layer and then attached the lining layer to the other side so it was sandwiched between the two and the teeth of the zipper were pointing towards the inside of the jacket. Once I'd pinned and sewn these two zippers in place, I turned it inside out and top stitched the fabric along the side of the zipper teeth to give it that added clean look. Initially my plan was to sew around the band at the bottom to finish off the jacket, but because my fleece lining was quite bulky, it made the stitches look a little funny. So in the end I pinned the inside and then just hand sewed along the seam and I found that it actually gave it a really professional finish. Since I'm recreating a $700 jacket I didn't think it was too much effort to put in. To do this I just used a ladder stitch and that creates a finish where you can't actually see the threads at the end. I repeated this same process on the sleeves with the hand sewn ladder stitch. This is probably one of my best sewing projects I've ever completed. It's got more of a professional finish than I was totally expecting it to have, especially to say it was just a bunch of scrappy offcuts to start with and I'm beyond chuffed with how it's turned out. I've enjoyed this project so much and I really love recreating this jacket. I think recreating designer clothing is something that I'd like to do more on this channel and if you'd like to see more too make sure to comment down below. Thank you so much for watching, if you have a go at recreating this jacket yourself make sure to tag me on my Instagram at lhorrellsewing, I'll make sure to link it down below as well and if you've enjoyed this video make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more as well. Now stay safe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.